In this video, I'm going to go over some uh, tips for designing in Shoe Last Maker. Um, one of the challenges with this parametric shoe last design software is that uh, there's a, sometimes you can see there's a lot of dimensions that need to be edited, um, and it can be a bit daunting to look at them all. For instance, if you take a look at the bottom of the edge of the shoe last year, it's, uh, there's a lot of dimensions going on here. And on some of the other templates, there's even more than this. Um, so what I like to do is to edit uh, one type of dimension at a time. So let's turn off angular, radial, control point spacing, annotations, and just look at the linear dimensions. And now you go to the bottom edge, and you can see it's a lot easier to look at that um, and uh, to adjust that. So now you can also turn off linear and turn on control point spacing if you're more concerned with the, the shape and you're trying to adjust the shape of the shoe last. And so now you can see just the control point spacing dimensions. And this works with all the various curves. The next tip I'd like to mention is that um, sometimes it's useful to edit more than one curve at a time. And to do that, you can either select the curves and then hit the edit or edit and then select the curves that you want to edit and then right click or hit enter. And now you can see we're still just looking at the control point uh, um, dimensions to keep this a little bit simplified. Uh, but if you're trying to, this is useful if you're trying to kind of uh, ensure consistent numbers across multiple curves. For instance, uh, this 50 here it's quite a bit different than the 40 here, so maybe you want to drop that down a bit. It's more likely to get you a smoother surface. You can update, and you can see that's just changed just very slightly in that region. Uh, so this is, you can edit uh, two, three, you could edit all the curves at the same time if you want, but uh, just to keep it simple, I recommend using the previous tip, which is to only edit one dimension at a time, particularly when you're editing more than one curve at a time. The next tip is that you should always try to edit dimensions from the most advantageous uh, curve or view. Um, so I'm going to go back to uh, linear dimensions here. And if we edit this curve here, um, you can see this uh, this two point uh, this 22.2 up to the, the quadrant height essentially here. Um, you could edit that dimension from this view. Uh, but it's more advantageous to edit it from this view. If you select uh, this wall curve here, and you can see this 22.2, you, if you edit it from this view, then you can see um, the, the quadrant heights across all the other cross sections. So as you're trying to ensure a, a smooth shoe last surface, um, you, you get a better shot at it by uh, changing all of these dimensions at one time. So you can see it kind of dips down in this area, so we might try going up to, up to 20. There, and now you can see you're getting a much smoother uh, transition through that area. Another tip is to um, show the shoe last surfaces uh, when you're doing your editing. Uh, to do this, you can turn on in the options menu, uh, turn on sh show surfaces when updating. It helps to also turn off in plane editing in this instance. So now when you edit the ball girth curve, for instance, you can still see all the shoe last surfaces uh, as, at the same time as all the dimensions, and we're not stuck to seeing it from one single planar view. So you get a more immediate feedback of what's happening to the, the material the shoe last as you're um, doing your edits. So for instance, we have this 45% control point dimension here, uh, essentially controlling the shape on the lateral side of the ball here. And if we go up to uh, 55 and keep a close eye on, on the surface here, update, and you can see we've added quite a bit of material here. But of course the, uh, the actual ball girth dimension is being maintained. So when you add material here, it'll uh, take the material away on this side. Or rather, it would uh, lower, essentially, the, uh, the dorsal profile curve in that area. 
then you, when you're done, you just hit end edit and uh, those dimensions will be gone and you're back to the viewing mode. A related tip uh, while you still have the uh, show surfaces turned on is uh, to use the, the clipping planes. Uh, so let's uh, edit a couple curves here. And now um, you'll turn on uh, clipping planes to by uh, instead of having the, the O here for off, you choose the, the plus in the side panel here. And now you can move the uh, position of the clipping plane. We're in the sagittal view right now uh, for the clipping plane, but you could also choose any other view. So to, by doing the clipping plane button, and uh, for instance, this uh, let's choose the, the frontal plane. And now that gives you an idea of what all the cross sections along the length of the shoe last look like. But in uh, the uh, in this example, I just want to look at the uh, sagittal clipping plane coming from uh, not the plus side, but the negative side. So you can see uh, you, this uh, shoe last surface starts to dip in this area a little bit. It's going to be almost imperceivable when you're handling actual physical shoe last, but if you're really aiming for perfection, um, you can start to uh, tweak some of these parameters to try to get a little bit of extra material added in, uh, perhaps in here, to try to get rid of that dip. So we'll just move the clipping plane out, and to see. Uh, We'll try add. We'll try increasing this dimension here just slightly up to, uh, maybe up to or down to eighteen uh, percent. So you can see we increase the material maybe too much in that spot right there, but uh, you can fiddle with that until you can get a really smooth cross section curve in that area. And then when you're done, hit end edit. And uh, you can turn off the clipping planes by going to the O there for off. Uh, the next tip is to use uh, last transparency uh, to help you see what's going on inside. Uh, this is helpful if, if you can't see a dimension that you're trying, if you um, are showing surfaces when you're updating and you can't see a dimension that you want to see, you can turn on last transparency. Um, or if you're trying to pick up a curve on an uh, insert, which is an orthotic or a insole uh, and you can't see it and then you can turn on last transparency. Similarly if you're working on uh, a bespoke shoe last and you have a foot model uh, and you want to see where the foot is residing inside the shoe last that's another instance where it's useful to do this. So if you go into options and you're in rendered mode and you turn on last transparency let's go up to 0 0.6 transparency where one is the max um, and then hit OK. Now you can see what the, uh, the orthotic looks like inside the shoe last, and you're better able to pick up whatever curve it is that you want to edit. Now getting back to editing here with this next tip, um, <clears throat> most uh, monitors are, uh, are widescreen, uh, so that's why uh, the orientations uh, for editing are set with a shoe last going along the uh, the width of the screen, uh, but some people, uh, particularly uh, more traditional uh, handmade uh, shoe last makers, will be very familiar with looking at the shoe last um, in a more in the vertical orientation. That's how they're most familiar with handling shoe last. So, what you can do is you go into options, um, and now you can say view last vertically when editing the bottom edge. Now go back to editing that last bottom edge and now you get a vertical view which is, can be much more familiar for some people. Similarly you can also set it up so that you're editing from the bottom uh, and so it'll flip over and look at the bottom of the last instead of looking from the top. And this uh, last tip relates to uh, finding the most efficient way to adjust parameters when you're doing editing. It's not something I can really show, just uh, 
is kind of uh, described as I go here. Turn on can, uh, control point spacing dimensions. Go to the ball girth curve for as an example. Uh, and so now, say you're wanting to change this uh, 40 to 50. Uh, the way I like to do it is to left click it. That brings up um, the form to adjust the number. And now with I take my so I, I use my right hand on the mouse to left click it. And now I move my right hand over the number pad uh, because it's just so much easier to, uh, without looking, adjust numbers, uh, to input numbers with the number pad. So I type in uh, 50. You don't need to put in a percent symbol because it already knows it will, that's what it will be. So you type in a 50. And then with my baby finger, I hit the enter key. And then I uh, bring my hand back to the, my right hand back to the mouse and then left click the update button. And that's uh, that's what I think is the the easiest, fastest uh, way to adjust parameters. Because when you start using your left hand to put in numbers, you have to look down at the keyboard and and then uh, type in the numbers that way, um, rather than just uh, blindly using the numpad with your right hand. Um, yeah, you might find your own way that uh, works out faster, but that's what I find uh, works for me. Uh, that's all for the tips uh, in this video. Uh, thanks for watching.